All right, guys, welcome to episode 61 of In the Shop with Custom Lowe's. Today, we're going to be building an enclosure for two CT Sounds Mezzo 12s. Uh, I got the design right here and the cutlass ready to go. We're going to be building this enclosure. It's got curves on it, plexi windows, window braces, a whole bunch of cool stuff on it. So we're going to go through the whole process building it. I'm going to get the cut pieces cut up. Um, I'm a little cold right now, as you can see, even though it's Florida. No, I don't care what temperature it is, where you're at. Um, we're going to get started on this enclosure and... Uh, Let's get some work done. All right, so we got all the pieces cut. Now we're gonna start with the assembly. The first piece I'm gonna be working on is probably this back kerf here. Get that all cut out and then do the front there with the baffle. We're gonna bring you back in once I get a little progress made on it. All right, so I got the front curves cut. I decided to go with the front this time because just the way the enclosure is assembled, the front kind of overlaps everything on the side. So I wanted to do the front first. Um, we're gonna get the glue in between the joints now. If you guys wanna learn how to curve, you can check out my curve tutorial. I got part two part video on that. Uh, go check that out. But I'm gonna get the glue in these joints and then we'll get to clamping this up and move on to the back curve. So this is our basically our front kerf or baffle kerf. We got this all done, glued up. It's drying right now. We're gonna attach it to the bottom and then we're gonna start working on our back kerf. We gotta attach this one first because the way it overlaps on the side, I'm um, just gonna make it a lot easier. I normally do it in reverse, but I'm not sure why I designed it this way, but either way, we're gonna make it work and uh, keep going a little farther. I'm gonna get this piece attached to the bottom. Then I can uh, fully dry up with the kerfs there. We're going to start on the back curve and get a little more progress done. All right, so I got this front curve attached. Got it glued, nailed, and screwed. Now, if you remember from my last video, I mentioned that I'll hide screws where I can. This is gonna be the bottom of the enclosure. You're not gonna see it, so I'm gonna put screws screwing in the layers, um, and then probably some of the baffle as well, but we're making good progress on this. We're gonna start on that back curve now, and then get that cut up, glued up, and attached. Got this 
back curve cut up. Got this piece. And then this long, well, this bigger one here. Uh, there we go. I'm getting some braces put in the port. I'm gonna have one here that's gonna brace the port to the back wall. And then one here as well that'll brace, brace the port to the sidewall. So should make the enclosure a lot stronger adding those braces in. I'm gonna start getting these glued up and let this thing dry while I do the braces. So now that I got that back piece on there, we got this thing clamped up, glued up, screwed up, drying. We ended up putting screws in the port braces like I showed you guys. And then on the bottom as well, where all the side panels are screwed onto the bottom. Next thing really after all this stuff dries is to get the baffle on, but I'm gonna let this dry for an hour or so. Those port braces definitely clamped on there really tight. Got a lot of pressure on those. This thing is definitely gonna be really strong. Got a triple baffle, so we got two more layers on the baffle to add, and then the top we're getting plexiglass windows. And then also we got to do the, uh, the window brace, so a lot more work to do, but right now we're sitting good because we basically have the whole outside structure done and really the, the most difficult, challenging part of this build. So get a little bit of dry time on here, and we'll be back getting that uh, double baffle, or triple baffle in, and then do the window brace. Again, if you guys want to learn how to do this and learn how to curve, I do have a tutorial video. Um, go check that out. It's a two-part video where I show you guys a couple different size radiuses, how I set them up, all that good stuff. So make sure you go check that out if you want to curf. Um, if you do need subwoofer enclosures, make sure you go check out my website. I got links in the description below for that. But let's get back to work and get some more done on this thing. So I went ahead and let that dry overnight. Now we're gonna start working on this baffle. It's a triple baffle, so it's got three layers. We're gonna do one layer of flush mount. Again, this is for two CT Sounds Mezzo 12s. Got all the curves in there. Port bracing, seems gonna be definitely nice and strong. We also got a window brace too, but we're gonna do that after the baffle because it goes between the baffle layer and the back wall. So let's get this baffle cut. We'll start getting these pieces put together and uh, get a little further into this. Baffle was finally assembled, or is on there rather, uh, glued, screwed, got the clamps on there, it's drying up now. We're going to start working on the window brace, getting that cut out made. Uh, then we can start moving on to the top, I guess, after that, but we're going to start working on the window brace either way. Got a jigsaw, let router it, whole bunch of work to do on that. Let this dry up, install that, and then we're getting close to getting this finished up. window base to dry basically I'm gonna start working on the top piece figuring out the plexiglass windows for that where they're gonna go what shape they're gonna be how big they're gonna be um, <clears throat> once this is all dried up then we can get the top on and basically we're about almost done with the build part of it and then we're just router and sanding
Now that we got the window brace in, all we got left is the top, basically cutting out the plexiglass windows, or the holes for that, then cutting the plexiglass windows, securing them and stuff, but we're making good progress. We're almost done with this enclosure. I'm definitely happy with how it's turning out. Definitely just the looks of it, I mean, I don't know if you could say it looks loud, but it looks like it's going to be loud. Just the, the curved port, I really like the way that turned out. Bracing thing looks super strong. Window brace looks really good. Everything's turned out real good with this enclosure. Let me know what you guys think about this enclosure in the comments below. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure you do so now. And like I said before, if you guys wanna learn how to kerf and uh, do something similar to what this is here, go check out my kerf tutorial. I got a two part video series on how to kerf and I explain the process um, that you need to take to get corners like that. So go check that out. And we're gonna keep continuing on this box and get this thing finished up. All right, so basically here, um, this is kind of my method when I don't have a template because I really don't have a bunch of templates for windows and stuff like that. Um, I rough cut, you know, the shape I want. If I'm doing a square, this works out really super easy. Um, rough cut the shape you want, and then you're gonna take some scrap wood, rip it down, and then I just nail it. Because this is really the inside of the enclosure, you're not gonna see it anyway. So I just nail it to the beast, and then I'm gonna take my flush trim bit, run it with the bearing running around, running around the wood, and uh, that'll give me my windows. Obviously the corners, they'll get the natural round from the bearing itself, so you wanna stay away a little farther on the corners. You don't wanna square your corners off at all. Keep them round because the bearing of the router bit will actually make that corner perfectly round on all the corners in this. So just gotta flush trim this out. The windows will be done. Then we're gonna get some plexi, start cutting that down, and I'll go over how I attach it just because I've had a bunch of questions just even in the last few days. So I'll go over one method I use of attaching the plexi in the next few steps. All right, so I got the place of glass cut. I'm just working on mounting it right now. I went ahead and drilled it. Um, I'm using normal drywall screws for this because really if the box is strong, once the adhesive dries and everything is dry, you really shouldn't need much to hold on the plexiglass either way. So um, I drilled these out with a 3 bit because you do not want the threads to bite into the plexi or you do risk cracking it unless you're gonna like thread the plexi, which I have done, but for this application, it's not needed. Um, either way, 3 8 drill bit or yeah, 3 8 drill bit through that and then I went ahead and, you know what, I'm sorry, that is 3 sixteenths, not 3 eighths. That's not even, not even close to 3 eighths. Okay, 3 sixteenths, then I countersunk it. I'm going to use inch and a quarter screws. This is one inch plexi. Uh, normally for a box like this, I would use three quarter, but I had one inch on hand and I'm not going to wait for the three quarter to get in to finish this box. So I went ahead and used the one inch for something like this. Three quarter is probably the smallest I would use. Other boxes, you know, smaller pieces, you could use half inch or even like a piece like this, you could use half inch if you're going with some smaller subs um, or less power. But we're going with one inch on this. i am got it all drilled up now. I'm about to throw some silicone down around the whole perimeter. The silicone is really just to give it a good airtight seal. Uh, the screws will hold it on until the silicone is really dry. Then the silicone will do a pretty good job holding it on, actually. Um, then got to get this other piece on. And basically putting the top on and we're we're almost there. Got the plexiglass glass all attached. You can see the silicone around the edges. That is actually just the excess silicone. I actually put it around the perimeter where this plexiglass directly sits on it. I normally don't put anything around the perimeter, but this was just the excess that I basically wiped all around it. You can kind of see the 
glossiness around the piece of plexiglass. But now this is all done. We can get this top put on here and uh, get to routing these sides out and we're getting, well, almost done, I guess. Finally got everything assembled. Plexiglass windows are in. All the pieces are in. Glue is dried. We just went around, or I don't know why I keep saying we. I mean, I guess you guys are here too, but I just went around with the router with a uh, chamfer bit just to give it a little bit of a profile. Gonna start sanding this up. I'm gonna start with 100, it's pretty good. I don't really think I need 80 on this. This is gonna be a bare wood enclosure like the last video. So we're gonna do 100, probably 220, and then 320, and then after sanding it with, well, after sanding it with 100, we're gonna do wood filler, and then 220, then 320. Then this thing should be good to go, but this thing's looking awesome so far. These plexiglass windows are definitely huge. Definitely gonna give a big view to those, uh, the motors. Let's get uh, a little bit further though. Well, after I got this thing all sanded up with the 100, I went ahead and put some wood filler on it. Um, I make sure to get all the nail holes. I even cover the edge grain, just because there's little small, tiny pin holes and stuff that I don't want to see. This is a bare wood enclosure, so it is gonna stay just a bare wood finish. I want to make sure it's as nice as possible. So I definitely make sure I spend some time uh, putting the wood filler on. Now I'm gonna sand it with 220. And after that, I'm going to send it with 320. Then this thing is nearly all done. Basically, take the paper off the plexiglass and uh, put the speaker terminals on. But this thing's looking good, looking loud. Again, this is for two CT Sounds Mezzo 12s. If you guys want to order an enclosure like this, you can get one from my website at www.customoils.com. So I got these LED wires in here. I got the wires coming out the back. I just drilled a hole. From the inside, I actually silicone it. Uh, from the outside, I put a little silicone and I actually put a washer around it. And then I'll put one of those wire tie downs like I did on the inside of the box on the outside. Basically, this thing is just about done. Uh, just finally securing these back, these wires in the back for the LEDs, make sure they're not gonna go anywhere. Do a little test run, make sure the lights work perfectly. I like to run them for like an hour or two most of the time just to make sure everything is good even when they get hot enough. Um, but this thing's coming along good. Plexiglass windows got the paper off. This thing's looking awesome. You can definitely really see more of what this enclosure is going to look like. But got a little bit more work to do on these LEDs and thankfully we're getting there. finished up with this enclosure right here got the LEDs wired as you can see they're going right now these are RGB LEDs again this is an enclosure for two CT sounds Meso 12s it's got the triple baffle on there with the flush mount window brace in there kerf port extra kerfs 
on the back wall, the back of the kerf wall. Got the kerf on the interior of the port. And then got the bracing on the inside, which you guys seen before. This thing's definitely looking good. These plexiglass windows on this one are one inch thick. On the back of it, we got the standard bolt terminals and then where the LED wires come through. Bolt terminals, LEDs, got the wires coming through, sealed up, secured. Make sure they don't ever get yanked, pulled, or torn off of the box. This enclosure right here, well, all of my enclosures are uh, constructed out of poplar plywood. This one specifically is definitely poplar plywood. Uh, it's 33 hertz tuning, four cubic feet after all displacement, and that includes the subwoofers, the bracing, the port, um, everything got involved in there. $730.50 total for something like this. Half down payment would be $365.26. It's uh, 34 inches wide, 24 inches deep, and 15 and a half inches tall. Again, you got the two plexiglass windows on the top. These are actually one inch windows. The standard window is three quarter, but we went with the thicker window just because I had it in stock and ready to go. Um, you guys can order a enclosure like this from my website, www.customlows.com. You can get this enclosure. I got a bunch of different options. Um, definitely, this is a fancier 212s enclosure. It is bare wood, but it has the extra kerf in the back right there, the extra kerf there, and also the extra kerf on the inside there. Normally when you order a kerf port enclosure, all you're going to get is the kerf on the front right here. Um, that is going to be the kerf port part, but this one here has three additional kerfs. Obviously the two plexiglass windows, the LEDs, and then it has a, I want to say it's a level two um, enclosure strength uh, option. Basically that is gonna give you the window bracing the extra baffle layer and then the um, extra bracing that you see inside the enclosure and inside the port there. Like that. Again, if you guys want to order an enclosure like this, make sure you go check out my website or you can go check out something in the low fab section. Going to get you a cheaper enclosure plus also a lot faster build time. My, my current build time right now is five to ten weeks. I uh, updated it for the new year. We're moving a lot faster now, so we're going to get this done. I'll definitely bring you guys updates on the other enclosures we're working on as well and uh, some of the vehicle projects when I get those a little bit farther done. But that's it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please make sure you do so now. Let me know what you think of this enclosure. Drop me a comment below. Like this video and make sure you share this video and uh, send your friends to my website to get some of the best enclosures on the internet or go order now. I also got subwoofers there. Got underseat enclosures, got a whole bunch of stuff. So make sure you go check that out. And uh, I will see you guys again on another episode of In the Shop of Custom Lowe's. You guys know before I end each video, i got to give my Patreon supporters a big shout out. Maurice Baxter, Andrew Henning, Troy Lawrence, Critical Audio, Jeremy Rogers, Byron Chambliss, Brandon Coles, and Alan Joyner. And also my YouTube member, Chris. Thank you so much for supporting the page and everything I do. I really need a haircut. Um, either way, thank you guys. I will see you on another video. Let me know if you guys want to see anything special, any new tutorials or like that, anything like that this year. Um, definitely excited to uh, be cranking out boxes a lot faster. Definitely trying a new process with the way I do things and the way I handle things here. Um, definitely things were rough for COVID. It was hard to even keep caught up with the back order of stuff and then getting hit with all the, you know, the, the closures and everything like that was definitely a lot, of, a lot of difficult stuff going on. But either way, guys, thank you so much for supporting me throughout everything I've been doing, all the videos. Um, for my Patreons and my YouTube members. If you haven't joined the Patreon page, make sure you do so. And also the YouTube membership programs. Go check out all the perks on those different things. And I will see you guys again in another episode of In the Shop of Custom Lows.